What does successful diversity in the workplace look like? Well, there's some local businesses already doing this, and I got to sit down and chat with a few of these community champions. I think you'll enjoy hearing and seeing what actually makes them inclusive workplace champions. Hi, I'm Tony McNeil and I'm visiting Rakaia Island, which is part of the Ashburton District. I must admit, I've lived in Canterbury most of my life and I didn't realise we had a place called Rakaia Island. And specifically, we're here today to visit Rakaia Island Limited. I've been told they're doing some fantastic stuff to create an inclusive and diverse workplace. We're going to go and meet the team and they're going to tell us exactly what's been going on. Once again, Mike, Annabelle, thank you so much for having me here. Rakaia Island. Tell me about Rakaia Island. Rakaia Island is in the middle of the Rakaia River, as it suggests. We are in between the south and north branch of the river. The island is 14 kilometres long and a kilometre and a half wide. So we have uh, 1,500 hectares that we're farming. Uh, we have four dairy sheds on the island now, and approximately 6,000 cows are milked here over the um, milking season and there's about 60, uh, 40 staff here on the island. So obviously 40 staff, that's like a, a small village or town here at Rakaia Island. Yes it is, Tony. We have uh, 19 houses here on the island and probably uh, maybe 40 or 45 people living here permanently. So it is a little community. Lots of uh, families, a lot of children here go off to school in Southbridge or, or Leeston. And uh, we have this uh, recreation facility here as well that the staff are welcome to use at any time and they often have meals here uh, during the day. So in the current labour market, I guess you have a lot of diversity on your farm. Yes, we do. We have, uh, I think there's maybe 12 different um, nationalities represented here on the island. Uh, so yeah, we have people from all over the world, from England, America, through to South America, uh, Philippines, India, and up in Asia. So and there's a, the odd Kiwi as well. So what challenges or things do you have to think about when you're, I guess, bringing a whole lot of different people together, and particularly when they're from overseas and different cultures and, and belief systems? So we try and be inclusive. So we get them involved in social activities. When they first arrive, we we welcome them. We point out the local facilities, what they what's in the area that they can do what they can't do sometimes as well and just make sure that they are comfortable and settled. Uh, we talk to them about the health system here, about you know, the local banking system and just make sure that they are very comfortable in the new environment. Because I saw when I came in everyone enjoying a meal together, some kai. So uh, who cooks that and how does that all work? Uh, we have two uh, pastoral care ladies uh, here on the island that work uh, during the week and they provide meals for the single people here uh, at lunchtime. Uh, they also provide that you know, supportive ear for the staff if they have any problems or they want to ask questions about what's going on, what this means, uh, if they're from a different culture. So pastoral care is vitally important, so for you what does pastoral care mean? Looking after the people, helping them settle in the community. If they've got any issues that they can come to one of our pastoral care workers. Um, they, they can feel that they're in a home from home, um, that there's nothing they can't ask. Um, and that if there's anything they need from us, then we can help them through it. I think the employees really value having the pastoral care service here. It is something that not that many other businesses offer, 
um, and it's something that helps to settle our staff and uh, it's, uh, it helps with the retaining our staff and making sure that they are cared for in an environment that isn't too dissimilar from their own at home. So how do you ensure that um, your team leaders or managers are on that same page in the pastoral care space? Um, pastoral care is part of our culture. Uh, we don't just leave it down to one person, it is part of everything that we do within the team. So building teamwork is obviously crucial in running a, an expensive farm like this. So look, I look over your shoulder there and I see you've got values up on the wall. So was this a family farm originally or? So Doug and Dave Turner and Helen and Mark Turner were the original founders of Rakaia Island. And they've been here all the way through, 25 years now, we've just celebrated that they've been farming here at Rakaia Island. So they converted uh, an old sheep and beef uh, farm into this wonderful facility we have today with four dairy farms. And the family values are a very big important part of, of what we do here and so we, we are very conscious of that in our daily routines. And I guess you've always got to be thinking ahead of the game and what you're going to do different as you go forward. Now I understand you're going to start photographing um, standard operating procedures or SOPs. That's right, we've decided to try and standardise our SOPs across the business and uh, to make sure that people can follow uh, the, the written English. Uh, we're also attaching photos now to every step of the way so that if somebody's not quite sure of the understanding of a particular word, they can refer to the photo and the diagram and just make sure that they can see that they're doing the right thing. So it's just another one of those things we're doing to make sure that the people that come from uh, different cultures and different languages can understand what we do. So if you had any advice for any other employers who had a farm or of this magnitude with that diversity of staff, what would it be? That you um, engage them early on, you get them involved in, in the, what your um, values are, what you're trying to achieve on the farm, make sure that they are settled into their uh, houses and the community, they understand what the expectations are and that you're there to help them and they can come with any question, any time to, to any of us on the farm. And, and it's always going to be, um, we'll always answer it. Mike, Annabelle, thank you so much for having me here today. I really enjoyed this interaction and gaining this information that you've been able to share. So thanks so much. Thank you very much, Tony. I really appreciate you coming along today and, and learning a bit about Rakaia Island and how we operate. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Awesome. Annabelle. Thank you. See you again.